Bollinger bands are one of the simplest, yet most useful technical indicators. The goal of this video is to introduce the idea of Bollinger bands and show one of the ways to use it. It is of paramount importance to realize that no strategy is guaranteed to work, and investing and trading come with enormous risk. So, whenever you apply whatever you learn, remember you must do it with discipline. Bollinger Bands were developed and copyrighted by the famous technical trader John Bollinger. The idea is very simple. You plot the 20-day simple moving average of the close or the typical price and plot 2 sigma, 2 times the 20-day standard deviation, above and below the center simple moving average line. And those 2 sigma lines are the bands. Super simple. You can try different parameters. Instead of 20 day look back period, you can try, for example, 15, 30. Instead of 2 sigma, you can try 1.5 sigma, 1.8 sigma, etc. Statistically, the probability beyond 2 sigma is very small. If the price moves for a normal distribution, that's only 2.3% on each side. So, whenever the price moves outside of the bands, there's a certain degree of confidence that it will fall back into the zone encompassed by the two bands. With that idea, you can construct a mean reversion strategy. Note the probability we talked about earlier is based on the 20-day look-back period in the past. And the past performance is not indicative of future results. So sometimes price would stay outside of the bands or keep staying close and hugging the bands. When that happens, the chances are we are seeing a breakout or a new trend forming. The width of the zone between the two bands will get large too in the, this case, so you can consider Bollinger Bands a volatility indicator. When the width gets very small or the recent realized volatility is very low, relatively speaking, you may get a squeeze, the so-called Bollinger squeeze, and then a breakout. Here, I'll describe one possible way to use Bollinger Bands to construct a mean reversion strategy. Again, no strategy is guaranteed to work, so this is for educational purposes only. Every trading strategy comes with an entry point and an exit. Here, the entry point is when the price breaks outside above the upper band or below the lower band and then re-enters the zone. We're going to assume we can enter at a close without a delay or slippage. Using General Motors as an example, we start from August 2019. We see first long entry here around August 16th. When the price goes back above the lower band, and after entry, we are going to set the target to be 1 sigma above the 20-day simple moving average line. So if the behaviors of the stock stay the same, we would make almost 3 sigma. I know I'm not plotting the 1 sigma lines here because the plot is already very busy, but hopefully you can tell 1 sigma line uh, is in the middle of the center um, SMA line and the two bands. About two weeks later, we hit the target, one sigma above the center SMA line. Keep going, we see a short entry here when the price re-enters the zone after breaking above the upper band. We see the target to be one sigma below the center SMA line again. About two weeks later, we hit the target and get out. Luckily, both these two trades are winning trades. In the first trade, we had a long position and the price moved up. In the second trade, we had a short position and the price dropped. Let's continue. We have a long entry again. Hit the target here. A short entry. Hit the target. Another two winning trades. Very lucky. A long entry. Hit the target. A short entry. Here's the target, another two winning trades, another long entry, but now notice we have an exit, not because we hit the target, but because the price breaks below the lower band again, so we need to get out. 
Consider this a stop for our long position. This last trade was a losing trade. You cannot win all the time. Now we see another long entry point. Because the price re-enters the zone from below. You may start questioning. We were just stopped out of our previous long position. This seems to be forming a new downward trend. Shall we take this entry? To make it more rule based, we are going to come up with a condition. We are going to assume when the last 5 points were all below the 1 sigma line, it's in a possible downward trend, then we are not going to enter a new long position. You may think why 5, why not 4 or 6? That's a parameter you may want to experiment on. Ok, follow these rules exactly, since not all the, all the last 5 points were below 1 sigma line, we will take this entry. A little later, here we hit the target, so fortunately, it was a winning trade. We see another entry point here. Not, not all last 5 points were below 1 sigma, so we are taking this trade. Unfortunately, the price breaks below the lower band again, so we need to get out. So that's a losing trade. Now we see an interesting entry point where all the last 5 points were below 1 sigma. So we are warned that maybe a new downward trend is forming according to our rules. We are not allowed to take this trade, so no entry. Keep going. We see that. It was a good decision because we are indeed seeing a downward trend here. We are going to keep going. We see three consecutive possible long entry points here. But because all the last five points for each possible long entry were below one sigma. So we are not going to enter. According to our rules, we are not allowed to. We see the first two were good decisions because we avoided two losing trades. But because of the last decision, we missed this big reversal here. This is a trade-off we need to accept. Now here we see a short entry which we take. Unfortunately, it's a losing trade. Then the next two possible short entry points we are not going to take because all the last five points were above the 1 sigma line, so there's a big possibility we are in an upward trend. Again, we are missing a big reversal, potentially a very good profit here. But we have to miss because of our rules. We can see between February 2020 and June 2020, we only had one trade, which was a losing trade. Keep going, now we have a winning trade in July. So that was one way of using Bollinger Bands in the real life example. We have gone over the definition of the Bollinger Bands. You can see the definition is pretty straightforward. You can of course try different parameters and see which ones work better for your purposes. Since the probability being outside of the bands is low, only 2.3% on each side if it's a normal distribution, Bollinger Bands can be used to construct a mean reversion strategy depending how you find the overbought and oversold triggers. You have to be very mindful with possible breakouts or new trend forming. Otherwise, you would keep going into losing trades. Of course, there's a trade-off which is you may miss on some potential big reversals. We talked about using possible breakout as a condition for main reversion entries. What we didn't talk about is how to construct a breakout strategy. If you are interested, read about Bollinger Squeeze and maybe you can try to design a breakout strategy yourself. Okay, hope you find this interesting. Again, this is for educational purposes only because trading comes with a lot of risk. I invite you to check out my other videos such as asymmetry of returns and the danger of leverage to get some quantitative insight on the risk of trading. Okay, thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.